Out here on Colorado's rugged western slope, you'll find a special breed of people. We are the members of the Rocky Mountain Wing of the Commemorative Air Force. Dedicated volunteers committed to educating, entertaining, and inspiring current and future generations. We restore and operate historic aircraft and tell stories of the heroes that flew and supported them. This is our mission. Hi, I'm Kent Taylor. I've been a member of the Grand Junction CAF Rocky Mountain Wing for over 10 years, and I'm honored to introduce you to our operation. We're here to educate and inspire people across the Western states by restoring, maintaining, and flying iconic World War II aircraft and operating an Air Power Heritage Museum. But it's more appropriate to let the people who make it happen tell the story themselves. The CAF basically was formed by a bunch of uh, World War II aviators in the, uh, after World War II. Most of them were crop dusters or individual ranchers and what have you in uh, south, southeast Texas, southwest Texas, I'm sorry. And uh, it's evolved now over a period of uh, 50, 60 years to become one of the premier uh, flying museums in the world, no question about it. And the first couple that they bought was a uh, Corsair, I believe, and a P-51. And they were having so much fun that some of their friends decided they ought to do it too. So they ended up going by in a Bearcat and a couple other things, and a uh, Lefty Gardener, I think, bought a P-38. And so they were having a lot of fun flying around to different airports and things, and uh, pretty soon somebody said, you know, maybe we ought to make this into a group of some sort or another. So that was the original formation of the CAF. The uh, Rocky Mountain Wing uh, was formed in 1981, and some local individuals, uh, some of them are still around today, uh, decided to uh, form this wing. And uh, they got together and felt this was a, a viable entity and uh, something they wanted to do. And uh, consequently, they figured out, well, it's a lot of fun, but they don't have an airplane. And uh, one of the individuals here realized that airplane was just sitting there, so he petitioned headquarters at the time, and they assigned that aircraft to the Rocky Mountain Squadron. And in 1985, that aircraft was flown up here from Mesa, Arizona on a ferry permit, and as soon as it arrived, they put it into a five-year restoration, uh, and it came out in 1989-90 type area to where it was a flyable aircraft and it's been a flyer with the CAF here in Grand Junction for all these years. And uh, Dell told me uh, one time, he said, he just felt so good when he came back and he says, we have an airplane and it's a bomber. And they went to work on it. And lo and behold, sitting behind me right now is the results of those efforts. This is a TBM bomber of World War II vintage. And uh, the TB, it means torpedo bomber, and the M, believe it or not, means General Motors. There were almost 10,000 of these aircraft built in World War II. Uh, they were the backbone of the Pacific Theater in uh, attacking the Japanese, both in shipping and uh, land-based uh, targets, so as to speak. They were carrier-based. These aircraft weigh 18,000 pounds. Uh, military gross, and they were operated off of carriers as short as 500 feet. Well, it's a wondrous airplane. It was the largest single-engine aircraft used during World War II, and it amazingly used the shortest runways that there was in World War II, which happened to be aircraft carriers. And it was the largest airplane that flew off of aircraft carriers regularly in World War II. Yes, Jimmy Doodle flew B-25s off, but he didn't fly them back on again. <laughs> and he only did it once. So it, it has a tremendous history, uh, starting at the Battle of Midway where it certainly did its job, but it paid the price, all the way through the war in every theater of the war. And it became a jack of all trades. It was a torpedo bomber, it was a tactical bomber, it was a mine layer, it was a submarine hunter. It's really important what the Rocky Mountain Wing and other wings do in uh, celebrating and commemorating 
those aviators from not just World War II, but all through the years, even up till to now, that work hard to secure our freedom here in our nation. And I think it's a wonderful thing that we can maintain these aircraft to celebrate those activities. Going to air shows is a good time. Uh, I've been to probably about eight or nine shows in my four years. The people you get to talk to and meet at shows are wonderful. And it's always exciting for me to have a vet or the family of a vet come up and talk to us. And it seems like the airplane just opens a door for them. My dad joined, it's like, oh, I'll join because my dad's getting older and I would like to spend more time with him. So um, I joined and I've, over the past five or six years that I've been a member, I've seen cadets, which are like high schoolers or just out of high school starting college, but they can't afford the full membership. And they've been able to learn more about the World War II um, history and they've been able to learn how to maintain this plane as well. Maybe after I go out of high school, and they can maybe join the military as a pilot, and then maybe coming back here and flying for the CAF. Well, the Rocky Mountain Wing Museum uh, is here at the Grand Junction Airport. It's been here for quite a while, and we've had the opportunity to collect a lot of artifacts from uh, military uh, uh, retirees, uh, from people that are active, and also from families that wanted to memorialize some of the things that were in the family. And each of those things tells a story very often. And we've captured those stories and we can tell those stories in uh, tours here at the museum. And it's pretty exciting to see uh, special things that you wouldn't uh, commonly see with the stories about these wonderful people. The ramifications of that particular time in our history were so paramount that these younger children need to learn about the war and they need to learn about how the people that were participated in that war involved themselves. And so the Rise Above program, uh, which has its roots in, the, in our uh, Red Tail group, the, uh, the Tuskegee Airmen, is <clears throat> of special interest to me and a lot of other members because it instills a desire, we hope, and the younger generation to understand that they can rise above and they can do what they want to do. They can use their brain power. They can set goals for themselves. They can believe in themselves and they can learn to win. We are all colonels in this organization, including the many women who are part of it and who contribute quite a bit. We are colonels because no one is better than anybody else, and nobody can tell anybody what to do. We had the, the uh, Rise Above program here a year ago, and about 700 students came through in two days to go through the educational trailer that, that showed the uh, Tuskegee Airmen. And it was, mar it was marvelous. The children were really enthused and they all, uh, they got Rise Above uh, badges when they left. They were, they were pretty, pretty enthused. They were thrilled with that. It was a terrific, terrific education for those kids. We're here to respect the memory and spirit of the greatest generation and love bringing this important part of our past to life. If you're passionate about history, aviation, or inspiring the next generation, Look us up at www.rmwcaf.org or find us on Facebook. Educate. Entertain. Inspire.